Lee Hall, George Rosner back at our NAR studios. We are between games as Springfield wins our third place consolation game in Class 3A, and it's Hillcrest taking on Lombard Montini for the four, uh, 3A rather state championship. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks comment about the blue coat. I wore the blue coat yesterday. I hear about the blue coat all the time. We want to point out that George is wearing his basketball tie today. We want to just make yes. sure and point that out that his wife sees that. And we get a lot of points back at home, right? Oh, yeah, I need it. <laughs> um. Let's talk about uh, coming up here, Hillcrest, a team that has strived to get here, uh, been on a one-year mission, really, since losing in the Super Sectional to eventual state champ Peoria Richwoods a year ago. They have really got it going, and uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, that's their game. And uh, you're going to see the 1-3-1 one, trap. You're going to see the half court, three-quarter court. It's not coming off. Uh, you know, a key here is that Montini, they do not turn the ball over. And, uh, you know, they're, one of their trademarks is not turning the ball over against pressure. So it's going to be a great test uh, uh, to see if they can continue to do that. Let's take a look at our tale of two cities as these two. Actually, let's first look at the map. There you get uh, a look at Lombard Montini and Country Club Hills, both uh, in the Chicago land area there. Country Club Hills maybe 15, 20 minutes from U.S. Cellular Field on the south side, uh, according to uh, Coach Manny Otis, and that's how, uh, that's how those of us in central Illinois kind of break those things down to figure out where things are. But uh, he has done quite a job, 16 years, 386 wins, and, you know, he'd never been to state until now. Well, you know, that program, I, that program has been getting better and better. Uh, you, just, you can see it out there right now. They're, they're very confident. Uh, they're they're not backing down. You know, Martini's been here. They have a little bit more experience, but I, you know, I just uh, watching the girls from Hillcrest yesterday. Uh, they're they're right here. They feel very at home in this game right now. I think they feel they've earned it. All right, now we're ready for a tale of two cities, uh, one of the great classics. But in this case, we are looking at the cities competing here: in Lombard, forty-two thousand eight ninety in DuPage County. The enrollment just over a thousand in the Suburban Catholic Conference, Country Club Hills, we mentioned in Cook County, the enrollment 1329 for the Hawks in the South Suburban Conference. And, uh, you know, tale of two cities, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That guy really tried to cover himself, didn't he? It was one or the other. It's the best of times for these two schools as they get ready to play for a state championship. Montini here a couple of years ago finished third, looking to do a little better here today. Yeah, Montini is is well balanced. I'm impressed. Uh, they they shoot threes. You know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. They they made over 200 threes during the season. So if they're on, they're going to spot up in those corners. And if they're on and they hit those threes and uh, handle the pressure, then we're going to have a game right down to the wire. It's I, I expect a really good game here today. Number six Hillcrest against number one Montini up next for the 4A state champion or 3A state championship rather here on the IHSA TV network. It's the final game of the girls' high school basketball season in Class 3A, and it should be a wild one. Lombard Montini, third two years ago, coming in with just two losses. Country Club Hills, Hillcrest, coming back from a super sectional loss a year ago. They have been on that one-year mission to get to state. Now they're here, and now they can play for a state championship. It should be a great one. It's the Lady Hawks. And the Lady Broncos and here for the call of the game, Scott Slocum and Sarah Kwasinski. Thank you very much, Lee. It is state championship Saturday here in Illinois. And in Class 3A, we're going to have a first-time champion. Montini or Hillcrest has never won a state championship, let alone appeared in a state title game. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. I'm Scott Slocum along with former Fenwick and Northwestern standout Sarah Kwasinski. And Sarah, this is it. All the practice, all the work, all the AAU, all the traveling. This is what it comes down to, the state championship game. This is why you play high school basketball. You want to come down here. I think about, you know, it was a while ago when I was down here. I'm still rushed with emotions for playing in that state championship game. I know anybody who's been down here knows what it's like. It's a rough, rough place to play, but you're going to bring it, and you are going to play your heart out. Well, let's take a look at how these two teams arrived in the state championship game. First of all, for Montini, they almost didn't get by Westchester St. Joe way back in the sectional semifinals, a one-point win put 92 on Riverside Brookfield. Johnsburg, a three-point victory, and of course, yesterday, that 17-point win over Springfield. As far as Hillcrest is concerned, they took out some South Suburban Powers, Rich Central, TF North, and then, of course, uh, avenged a 
loss from a year ago to Peoria Richwoods, last year's 3A state champion, and yesterday they beat Oswego by nine points. Okay, you have to have great players to win state championships. Notre Dame has to wait two years to get the point guard from Montini. Coach is glad he has her here today. Yeah, there's a reason why she's one of the top players in the state, Whitney Holloway, only a junior, and yesterday she came out playing like she is the best player in the state. I mean, she had 19 points, she cut the lane, she did everything for her team that she could possibly do. She made her presence known on the state tournament level. Okay, and with a great performance yesterday, young lady by the name of Yolanda De La Torre now has a big fan right here. I, I am a huge fan of this girl, Yolanda De La Torre. She came out 18 points, post player that does every little thing right. You know, she hustles after the ball. She's doing those little things needed that a lot of people don't, you know, take notes or stats on, but she does them, she gets it done. And I have to say, I like her. Yep. I don't know if you know, but I like that girl a lot. Well, in order for Montini to win their first ever state championship, it all starts from outside. They have to shoot the ball well from beyond the arc. They do. That's the one advantage that Montini has over Hillcrest is that they shoot well from three. They were 8 for 21 yesterday. When you look at Hillcrest shooting in the game yesterday, they missed 0% for the three-point line. So Montini's really going to have to step up, hit the threes, and they have to use their depth. They got three D1 athletes on their team. You know, use that depth, get the ball around, not focus on one player, and then handle the ball. Hillcrest is going to bring a pressure. We saw it yesterday. You know, they forced those we go into 27 turnovers. So Montini's really going to have to handle the ball and their pressure. Okay, Hillcrest will force turnovers, but they have to score conversely. Correct. They need to translate those into points. So they need to get those turnovers, use them as easy points. Those are momentum builders. Those are the way you get your offense going, your defense going, and your team hyped up. They need to protect the paint. Holloway does a really nice job of getting the ball into the paint to make things happen, whether it's drive, create the fouls, kick to her teammates. They need to protect that paint and keep her out of there and then finish it. Hillcrest motto from the beginning or the end of last season has been Mission 2010. Dream it, earn it, live it, finish it. They are here. This is where they wanted to be. This has been their plan. Now they need to get it done and finish it here on the court today. Well, as you can tell, the crowd is fired up from both sides. Montini and Hillcrest for a first ever state championship for either school. And now for this afternoon's starting lineups, here's the public address announcer at Redbird Arena, Mr. Jeff Fritzen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for the 2010 Class 3A IHSA Girls State Basketball Championship game. First, from Montini Catholic High School, number three, senior Courtney Thomas. For Hillcrest, number 14, a sophomore, Samira Ali. For Montini, number 11, a junior, Whitney Holloway. For Hillcrest, number 31, a sophomore, Shanice Petty. For Montini, number 13, a senior, Mallory Sosnovich. For Hillcrest, number 32, a senior, Kristen Marshall. For Montini, number 20, a senior, Allison Seeberger. For Hillcrest, number 34, a senior, Uniqua Hampton. For Montini, number 32, a junior, Whitney Adams. And for Hillcrest, number 42, a junior, Yolanda De La Torre. The officials for this Class 3A championship, Don Whitey, Tim Griffin, and Steve Ramsayer. And now, fans, before our soloist sings our national anthem, we ask you to remember and honor the men and women of the United States Armed Forces serving throughout the world with a moment of silence. Thank you. And now we ask you to join our guest soloist, Tasha Malaris, a student at Carl Sandburg High School in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars 
And now is Montini, coached by Jason Nichols, and Hillcrest, coached by John Maniatis. Wish each other good luck at half court. The IHSA Board of Directors and member schools expect to promote good sportsmanship from all athletes, coaches, students, parents, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Remember to do what's right. There are your starters. A couple of very good point guards. Ali is only 5-2. But she can play. Holloway, of course, headed to Notre Dame. Sostovich, Seaberger, good three-point shooters. Hetty, Marshall, very aggressive. Hampton, headed to the ball for Hillcrest. De La Torre, a player to watch today. Thomas and Adams round out the top five for Montini. Here come the Hawks from Country Club Hills. Never been downstate. Jason Nichols, head coach of Montini. They were here two years ago. Settled for third. The Blue Crew against the Lady Broncos. And Montini looking for a third state championship this year. One in football, one in wrestling, and one in girls basketball. But Hillcrest, I think we'll have something to say about that. This is it, folks, for the 3A state championship for the 2009-2010 school year. This is Unique Hampton. If you're not familiar with Hillcrest, she's headed to DePaul. She's a McDonald's All-American, which means you are the best of the best in the country. She'll wear number 34. And we have a foul right off the bat. A shove in the back is going to be called against Courtney Thomas. We're going to see a big physical game out here today. Both teams have a lot to play for. There's a lot of emotions. We're going to see a tough physical game, a lot of knocking around, a lot of banging bodies. Who's that favor as far as officiating is concerned if it's like that? Well, it would really favor. I mean, it, it's tough. It depends on how the officiating goes. I mean, if they can call those fouls, it's going to be the team that doesn't learn quickly enough that they got to stop. Uh, but I think if the officials let him play and the officials let him go, I think Montini's going to have a little bit of an advantage on that on the inside. This is Sosnovich. Getting the start today. She's got it on the wing, left side for three. It's an air ball. Maybe some early game nerves. And remember, if you're also not familiar with Montini's, we look at their history, their fifth appearance, their first trophy last year, their second will be, of course, actually two years ago, their second will be here today. Michaela Johnson, one of the great players in the state of Illinois, in the country. She's headed to UConn next year, out with a torn ACL. Nice pass inside, and that's Shanice Hetty for the bucket, and Hillcrest takes an early lead. Yeah, Michaela Johnson, but she is the most emphatic cheer on her bench. She's never counted herself out of this season uh, while she can't play. I know she's still giving her, her teammates tips. She's still encouraging them, still offering support, and that's what you like to look for from a player. Adams drives, no good offensive rebound, Thomas. And then Montini will turn it over. It's funny, I keep, you keep saying that she's never counted herself out as you see the coach of Hillcrest, their first ever appearance. This guy is a treat to watch. Keep an eye on him today. Even the camera's not totally on him. He <laughs> is a wild man. I keep looking over there to see if those sweatpants are coming off, thinking she might do Surprise one of those somebody. Yeah, Willis yeah. Reed ent entering the, the garden in the playoffs. She's got a bright future ahead of her, though. No reason to do that. Against doctor's orders, you can't do that either. No. Here's Hampton. Three ball. Well, and this is a perfect start for Hillcrest. A team that has never been down here before. They're loose. Last night, as Lu as uh, Coach Maniatis told our Lee Hall during the third place game, that they went out to a movie. There's a three. Whitney Adams knocked one down. Yeah, they had a rock band idol 
title contest and went to a movie and went to Ruby Tuesdays. Yeah, you, you got to appreciate that. The team comes down here, lots of pressure on them. First, you know, first team down here from their school with a, with a long history of talent. And you can get so caught up in that pressure that he, he was like, we're having fun. That's it. We're going to enjoy being down here. We're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy each other's company. And there's a lot to be said about that, to not focus all about this, this one game here. De La Torre gets called for traveling. The last loss Jason Nichols had was against Bolingbrook. That was their first game without Michaela. An eight-point setback, and it was tied with three minutes left to play. And Bolingbrook will play Whitney Young tonight on the IHSA Television Network for the 4A state title. Seeberger in and out. And Hampton comes up for the tip rebound. Uniqua Hampton. Marshall had a big game yesterday. He wears number 32 in the corner. Ali for three. And the threes falling already for Hillcrest. Their second, they lead by five. State championship Saturday. Holloway leaves for Sosnovich. Antini can play at any speed. Hillcrest playing that 1-3-1. This isn't necessarily a trap. They try to make it hard for you to reverse the ball, though. And as you can see, up until that pass, the, the entire possession, the ball was on the left side of the floor. Well, that's a real nice move by Courtney Thomas. And that's what you want. If you're a defender, you defense playing the zone, you want them to keep the ball on one side of the floor. As an offense, you obviously want to reverse it and get the defense to shift because that's where they're going to be susceptible to mistakes. And um, you can probably penetrate the lane on them. But Hillcrest doing a nice job keeping them on one side of the floor. Thomas headed to Marquette. There's a ball that was tipped right into the hands of Eddie. She misses the layup. Thomas the rebound. And that last play by Thomas, again, we talked about the fact that she hasn't averaged many points this year. You see her do something like that, and you say she could do that any time, any, any way she wanted to. Yeah. A steal. Marshall misses the layup. Hetty there to finish it off, though. Chase Hetty with her second basket. And this is the pace Hillcrest wants. Now, don't get me wrong, Montini likes to run also, but Hillcrest loves to run. They'd love to take advantage of teams, and you know, if you give them an inch, they're going to take that mile and, and go with it. A runner from Holloway, no good. De La Torre the rebound. Hampton, one on five. Nice job by Montini getting back as a team. That's what they need to do. Stop their fast break, make them set up their offense. This is Marshall. Fires from 15, no good. The rebound to Whitney Adams. Adams, another one of those unsung players for Montini. 6'2", junior, very strong. T-Burger, a high arcing three. Nope. Rebound, Thomas. Throw it out of a double team right into the hands of Shanice Hetty. Hetty, one on three, is foul. Foul called on Courtney. We'll make that Whitney Holloway. Hetty was really strong with that ball. She was driving down. And so when you come across the players like that, you're going to get that foul. Fans not happy with it, but you can't come across the body like that. Yeah, there was a foul. It looked at the end like she got all ball, and she might have. Right, but it was getting to that yep. <laughs> getting to that point. Initially, she had a hold of her right forearm. Yeah. Here's Hetty. Really struggles from the line of 34%. Didn't look like it there. Subs coming in for Montini. Kiki Wilson checks in along with Tiana Brown. Wilson, a 5'5 senior, could start for probably most every other team in the state with the exception of two or three at point guard. And Tiana Brown is a very strong sophomore. This free throw way off, out of bounds. We're going to Montini, but first we're going to break. We're going to start with the Hawks. They are the lead Broncos by six. If you're watching the state championship game. We'll be back with more after these network messages. The Hawks have been very, very, very close to great here in the first five plus minutes. Yeah, Coach Manianis has to be happy with the way they're playing. They're playing hard. They're converting on the turnovers. They're doing everything I think that they would have talked about it in the pregame as to how to stop Montini. Now, 1-3-1 one, one is very difficult to play against. You don't see it all that often. Adams misfires baseline. Rebound comes out to Hetty. Now to Marshall. Well, they left her wide open and she missed an easy one. Out of bounds to Montini. The seas parted. It did. It, it wasn't open, and then it slowly she saw that opening. 
it seemed as if Montini players were getting out of her way. Jacqueline Foster checks into the game, a 5'5 senior. She'll give Marshall a little bit of a break. Montini two for eight, three turnovers, but only down by six. Long way to go, or just into the first quarter. Wilson, baseline Adams, nope. And the rebound comes into the newly inserted Foster. Look at Hillcrest run. They get that ball out so quick, and as soon as the Hillcrest players see one of their teammates grab the ball, they're going down the floor, and they're going hard. Nice pass from Hetty. De La Torre missed an easy one. Those are shots she didn't miss yesterday. Seaburger likes the three and buries it. Seaburger for three. Seaburger from downtown cuts the lead in half now. It's 11 to eight. Seaburger shoots 35% from beyond the arc, and there's a traveling violation against the Hawks. Hillcrest has been hot. Their last loss came back on the 20th of January to TF North. They then avenged that loss at the sectional final, beating TF North by 14. Adams in the corner. Sostovich thought about a three. Thomas fires, back of the rim, no. Ali the rebound. Samira Ali at 5-2, just a sophomore. She is a battler. Well, Hampton's been quiet here the last four or five minutes. She's taken just one shot. It was a three and she made it. But they need more from their McDonald's All-American. Yeah, she's gonna have to look to score more and then just have the ball in her hands more. De La Torre missed an open 15-footer, but Montini Knocked it out of bounds. And there's that 92-point outburst against Riverside Brookfield in the sectionals for Montini. There's Hampton. Foster. Hampton will try to make her second three and does. I mean, she's two for two for three-point land right now. Feeling it, you could tell in her face. Once a player like that starts feeling like they're hot, they're gonna become dangerous on the court. That once that ball hits her hands, I feel like she's gonna start shooting a lot more often. Thomas, nice drive and dish. Pass sailed right by the head of Brown. Out to Adams for a long one. That is good. These two teams lighting up from downtown. Hillcrest three of three from beyond the arc. Montini three of seven. Well, you said at the top of the broadcast here today that Montini's got to make their threes if they wanna win. Now Hillcrest will hold, or attempt to hold for the final shot. Here's Hampton, staring at a 2-3 zone. Here's Ali with six. De La Torre shovels at the Hampton, bad pass stolen. Wilson won't get a shot off. That's it for the first quarter. Worthy of a state championship game, these two performances, no doubt about it. We'll be back with more at Redbird Arena after these local messages. Back here at Redbird Arena. There you look down from the roof at Doug Collins Court. The ISU fans are happy. They won in the Missouri Valley Conference quarterfinals yesterday. They'll play in the semis today, which is good news for Redbird fans. 14-11 Hillcrest on top of Montini. Yeah, bringing out the big beef today. The Broncos are. I don't think that young man played on the offensive line for that state championship team. I think he was more like a wide receiver probably. <laughs> but what a performance they had in November down in Illinois against Joliet Catholic. And the wrestlers over at uh, the U.S. Coliseum, U.S. Cellular Coliseum last weekend on the 2A wrestling championship. They've had quite a year. And there's a tip pass, went off the shoulder of Seaburger. Ball will belong to Hillcrest. Turnover number four against Montini. Yeah, like we said, Hillcrest is gonna bring some pressure. And Montini's gonna have to be able to handle that pressure, which means good passes. You can't throw the ball away so easily. Marshall thought about a three. Gives to De La Torre, who scores down low. Yolanda De La Torre. Hillcrest has had this five-point cushion out for about the last two or three minutes. Montini will score, but then Hillcrest will push it back to five. Almost a steal there from Ali. Allison Seaburger. 
Up top, Whitney Holloway has been very quiet. Seaburger has already has one three. Doesn't get this one to go. The sophomore Brown gets the rebound, but then an offensive foul as she tried to create space. She did that. I mean, she got that rebound, and again, we saw it in the last game. It's that swinging of the elbow. If you're out of control in the slightest, they're going to call that foul on you. And when it looks like you're, you know, you're, you can lead with your elbow, but you can't swing it around. It's there a fine line, but it'll get you every time. There you saw the scoring numbers. As Brown has a seat, 90 points. This team is capable of putting up. That's a lot for a, a boys, a good boys team. Let alone a girls team. That's a lot for a college team. You don't see that often at all. Eddie from 13 got it. Point Hillcrest looks so comfortable. They look in their element. Seven of 14 from the field. Three of three from three. Seaburger got knocked in the face, no call. Ali is then going to be fouled by Allison Seaburger. Take a look at those first quarter stats brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. I mean, both teams shooting, I mean, Hillcrest is shooting a lot better. Um, but, and when you look at the three-pointers, I mean, I, I would never have guessed that Hillcrest would be shooting three for three from the three-point line coming into this game, obviously. But they're doing a nice job. I mean, they're shooting really well, and they seem very comfortable. Biggest lead of the game at seven. Ali drives in. Oh, did she get that shot off? Ali at 5-2, got it up and under, and then over Whitney Adams, who's 6-2. She's got some hobs on her. You can see she cleared her head. That I, I want to know her vertical jump, but she can jump. And, folks, as we said yesterday, Samara Ali is 5-2, is right? That's with the ponytail, okay? She is amazing. <laughs> And at 5-2, you say to yourself, come on, how can she play at the next level? Oh, she'll play at the next level. She's very good, and she uses her size well. Take a look at the common opponents these two teams have bumped into throughout the course of this championship season. Montini and Hillcrest each played Chicago Von Steuben, both won. Each played Trinity, both won. That Montini game against Trinity was in the super sectional. Montini only had two points at the end of the first quarter. TF North, that was one of the losses for Hillcrest, one of only their three losses. And then they each played Peoria Richwood, who won the 3A title a year ago on this very court. Yeah, they're dancing in the aisles now. Oh, the Country Club Hills are big in this nine-point lead. And Montini, if you remember back, and your fans do, to that football game back in November, you were down to Joliet Catholic big, so there's a lot of basketball There's a lot of basketball to be played. Still can't quite get my hands wrapped around those wigs from Montini yet. <laughs> there's Hampton, I got a flag for Uniqua Hampton. That's what happens in your McDonald's All-American, they make flags in your honor. Holloway for three, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. That is a big out. shot, they needed that right there. And, and Holloway, I mean, how calm, she just dribbles it up, shoots the ball, like it's nothing. And speaking of nothing, Uniqua goes, I got that. Yeah, Mattini needs to know it's going to be answered. They got to pick up the defense. They got to put more pressure on Hillcrest. I think Coach Nichols has to be a little bit surprised. He know, you know, he knows his team is good and he respects them, but they're shooting the ball better from the perimeter than I think he thought they would. 4-4 four, four from three. I mean, how do you contend with that? I mean, you don't, it, it, it is a shock because Hillcrest is such a drive, take it to the basket slash type of team. And for them to be shooting four for four from behind the arc, I mean, that's not something that I'm sure Montini prepped for. Adams missed, Montini four for 10. There's Ali knocking down another shot. It's all going right for the Hawks. Up by 11. And looking good doing it. Holloway dances into the lane and she's fouled. That will be called on Foster. This game gets more and more physical by the minute. Yeah, Holloway's really got to, I mean, she's stepping up. She's got to take it to the basket. That was a nice drive, but it's going to be tight in there. They're not giving her a lot of room to move around. I think she's she's used to having a little bit more space to maneuver, but those Hawks are going to clamp down. Foul on Marshall. Holloway misses this one. Kiki Wilson in, and Seaburger will sit down as... Coach Nichols tries to find a unit that will play well together. Holloway, the second, after missing the first. It's a 10-point lead, approaching the five-minute mark 
of the second quarter, the 3A state championship, live from Redbird Arena here on the Illinois High School Association Network. Nice pass inside, nice catch, nice finish. De La Torre with a bucket, her second. That was a nice lob inside, right over the defender's head. And De La Torre did a good job of holding her defender until that ball was within her reach, and then she let go and went after it. Sosnovich opens. She's deadly from beyond the arc, not this time. Hampton the rebound. Martini up by 12, looking to extend. De La Torre, a tough shot. And a rebound to Thomas. Foul called here against Marshall. And if it is against Marshall, that will be her second. <laughs> And it is Kamala Marshall and her second. Time out on the court. 12 minute lead for Hillcrest. We'll return with more championship basketball from Redbird Arena after these messages from your local station. Hillcrest a 27-15 lead here at Redbird Arena and we were the couple of the unsung heroes for both schools. The athletic directors, first Don Riley for Montini. You retired, came back and became athletic director, now you're retiring again and you're going out on a great note, a state football championship, a wrestling state championship, playing for a girls championship here today. Yeah, we're looking for the trifecta, but it uh, looks like the Hawks got something to say about that right now. Uh, we'll see what happens here though. It's, it's been a great run. Uh, the kids have played well in, in all sports. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a tribute to our athletes to be in, in these three championships. All right, sir, good luck to you. Lisa Wunar is here, the athletic director at Hillcrest. You're a former Lady Hawk. Uh, this has got to be a lot of fun for you. It's unbelievable. It's the best thing that can be happening for the school and the community. It's just an awesome, awesome experience for everybody involved with Hillcrest. Yeah. Couldn't ask for anything better. Basketball, base, uh, softball, and volleyball for you. That it was. It was a great career. I was fortunate to have some wonderful coaches just made it all worthwhile and I wanted to give something back just like I had give these kids an opportunity well, I think if you can get your coach to get some enthusiasm you'll be all right yeah you think he's gonna turn it up a notch <laughs> I think he's a little slow today Lisa Wunar thank you very much good luck to you all right the athletic directors unsung heroes guys just part of the people that help make it all happen for these kids back to you Foster a floater is no good and a big rebound there from Tiana Brown Brown is playing hard you saw her there while Lee was talking with the ADs blocked the shot and then dive on the floor. Wilson for three. That is good. Folks, this game is not over by a long shot. No, Tiana Brown has come in and said every every loose ball is hers. She's going up strong for that basketball. And, and no Hattie, one's going to stop her. Nope. Hetty misfires, and a foul is going to be caught on De La Torre. The one thing that Hillcrest, I think, can't do is, is that right there, a one on three. I know Hetty about made that shot. But one on three is going to give him in trouble. Last two times down, Sarah, one on three, nothing to show for it. No, it's not. It's because it's Hillcrest or Montini's got some size in there, so they're kind of just staying there waiting there for Hillcrest to come to them, and they're not able to get those shots off like they normally are. Whitney Holloway. Cross-court pass picked off by Hetty, but tipped right to Wilson. Adams up and under. Yes, and a foul. And here come the Lady Broncos on the charge. Whitney Adams does a good, good job inside. She's really a great player. She gets some D1 looks, but look at how strong she takes that ball up. She comes around, protective elbow up. That's a big time move. That was a big move. And key for their momentum swing right now late in the second, second quarter. Doesn't complete the three-point play, so the cushion is five for Hillcrest. Here comes McDonald's All-American, Uniqua Hampton. Hampton with nine points on three of three from behind the arc. She tries for a fourth, airs this one up. Ali tried to save it, but ran out of room. And this is the first time Hillcrest has faced a little adversity in this game. Everything has gone well for them. Yeah, they're going to have their ups and downs. I think they know it's not going to be a perfect run. Montini's going to fight back. They're not just going to fold over. And, and Hillcrest is going to see a couple more little stints where they're going to push, and Montini's going to push right back. Wilson almost got trouble over there on the sideline. Sostovich for three, short. Big side rebound, Wilson up with the left hand and in. That was 5-2 against 5-5 there. <laughs> it was a tough little player. You can see she kind of whipped her elbow around. She's going to go up there tough. And a steal. Holloway took it away from Ali. Adams is fouled by Marshall. That's her third. It's all started with Ali going behind the back into a trap. Right there, Whitney, Ad or Whitney Adams going up strong. And that's one of those, you can tell Marshall's trying to get out of the way, but 
sometimes the momentum of the game takes you that way and you just can't get out of trouble fast enough. And you know, going back to the steal by Holloway, Ali is Adams makes it a two-point game now. She went behind the back, dribbled right into that trap pocket, and Holloway just snatched it away from her. That's a sophomore mistake as Marshall sits down with two fouls. Foster back in for her. Just to make it a one-point game. Whitney Adams. Hampton looking to get it in. Throws it in to De La Torre. To Foster, back to De La Torre. Stripped away, but right into the hands of Hetty. Hetty, cross-court Hampton. Hampton stripped away, gets it back. Now Foster. Good ball movement by the Hawks. Foster goes in, throws up a bad shot. Adams controls, and Montini a chance to take the lead. Holloway, up, blocked out of there by Hetty. Wilson, no. Out of bounds to Hillcrest. Two minutes to go. Here in the first half, what a game. And this is the track meet we're talking about, back and forth. She got the head fake, but right there, Hetty's just a little bit too tall for Holloway to get that shot off. Here comes three-quarter court pressure now by the Lady Broncos. Hampton to Ali. Middle of the court, Hetty. Drop down De La Torre. No shot there, so she wisely brings it out. Oh, steal. Kiki Wilson took it away. Here comes Holloway, two on one. And a foul will be called on Hillcrest. It looked like it was Holloway creating the contact. It was, she kind of got her arm out there. She was trying to create some space, knew that she was blocked last time. She puts her arm out. They call they got it with the body. Here's Holloway at the free throw line. This would tie the game. It does. It was a double-digit deficit just moments ago. And just like that, Martini can take the lead. Sostovich and Tiana Brown sit down. Thomas back in. Seberger back in as well. The Lady Broncos have Storm back to take the advantage. Foster to Ali. Well, they have numbers. Here's Hattie. The runner is good. That's how you attack a press. Yeah, Montini's going to have to be careful about the press and when they show it because if Hillcrest keeps beating it that easily, it's not being very effective for them. They're not wasting a lot of time on this clock. Not a good shot by Wilson. He was leaning. Somebody in her face. Unique will have to back the other way. Top of the key. Drives down the lane. Just got away with a walk. Ball's on the floor. Who wants it? They all want it. Jump ball. It'll stay with Hillcrest. On that play alone, six players on the floor hustling after that ball. Somebody, somebody's going after it. If it's near them, they're diving for it. Well, some championship games are a bit anticlimactic. This one has been everything you'd want in a game. It's close, it's tight, hard fought. Ali in the corner to Hampton. Adams shadows her. Foster, De La Torre from 15, air ball. Rebound Adams. Kiki Wilson on the run now. Holloway loves going baseline. Stop and pop, knocked it down. We could tell, as soon as she got it, she was going one place, she was going baseline. She was, it was a nice pull up. There were three Hawks right there waiting for her. Foster, a floater, no. Hetty there to clean it up though. Where do 90% of the shots go, sir? Weak side. They do. That's what you teach your players. As soon as you see that shot going up and your weak side, you're boxing out. Here we go. Final possession of the first half. Montini holding for the last shot. Ten seconds to play. Wilson in the corner. Seaburger for three in the lead. Yes! Three. Allison Seaburger for the three. She and knows what a big shot that was. Montini. With the lead, 33-31. What a first half. About as exciting as you can get and about as close as you can get. Jason Nichols is the head coach of Montini. He is with our Lee Hall. All right, thanks, Scott. Jason Nichols, sorry. We got you running all over the place. 
Uh, I had that as an 18 to four run by your girls to end the half. Played some defense, located shooters in the last four minutes, hit some good shots. Allison hit one like that in the semis that got us going. Hopefully this is the same thing. What do you have to stay away from second half that got you down by 13 earlier? They gotta defend. We're getting beat off the dribble too easy. They're getting some easy runners and locate Hampton. It's pretty simple. All right, good luck to you second half. All right, hopefully he will keep his voice too for the second half. What a ball game here in our state championship. 33-31, Montini leading Hillcrest. Back after this on the IHSA TV network. And welcome to our National Association of Realtors halftime show. It's Lombard Montini charging back to a 33-31 lead over Hillcrest and we are in our NAR studios high above Redbird Arena Lee Hall George Rosner coach at Streamwood High School IBCA Hall of Famer and we talked before the game George about a tale of two cities this was a kind of a tale of two runs first it was Hillcrest jumping out to a 14 point or 12 point lead at least and seemingly doing everything right Unique Hampton hit some threes they looked so good to start that first quarter first half yeah, they did, and they, they, they did what they wanted to do right from the start. Their pressure was good, they were getting turnovers, and Uniqua, who did not have a real good game yesterday, came out today and hit some threes, had a real good game, and they, they looked like they were in control, and then it and changed. And then what happened? An eight, uh, a 13-0 run, an 18-4 run to finish off the half for a two-point lead for Montini, and then they could do no wrong. Well, they substituted, they put uh, Tiana Brown in, and she got an offensive rebound, and that seemed to spark them. That uh, offensive rebound was followed by a three, and then it was, you know, the 15-0 uh, the run and the 18-4. to uh, they, were, they were on fire. I mean, they were hitting their threes. Uh, Allison Seberger ends the first half hitting a three. And, uh, you know, the other factor was their press. They turned the game in from a 2-3 zone. They went into a full court press, and Hillcrest really had some struggle there. And that's a team that likes to press themselves. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, as coaches, we always talk about you. Sometimes you want to press a team that's pressing you. And in this case, it was the right thing to do because they had the momentum and then they went into their press. Great adjustment by Montini. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to us by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Uh, Montini, 40%. I'm, I'm guessing that average was uh, much less than that early in the game. As uh, you look at the breakdown of the numbers, Hillcrest uh, very close to 50%, just one make shy of 50%. Montini getting to the line quite a bit. Yeah, Montini got to the line 15 times, Hillcrest only five. And it, you know, it, it was earned. I mean, Montini went to the basket, they, they went to the basket hard, and, uh, and they deserve that. Five of seven free throws for Montini there in the first half. Hillcrest. 12 to 4, the points off turnovers and winning the points in the paint. But uh, boy, things kind of changed there in the second quarter. Adams with 10 to lead Montini, Holloway with 8, Seaburger with 6, uh, and then Hetty with 11 for Hillcrest. So there's a look at the individual numbers. And thanks again to Menards for bringing us those halftime stats. We'll talk more about the second half coming up after this local timeout from Redbird Arena. What a state championship game up to this point. 16 minutes in the books, two-point lead for Montini. Again, an 18-4 run to close out that first half, and the Lady Broncos are on top. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. Scott Slocum along with Sarah Kosneski. And, well, that's everything you wanted out of a championship first half, huh? It is. It's exciting on both ends. Just when you think Montini's down, they come back on an impressive run, and both teams are fighting hard out there and so it's a great game to watch it's very fun very fast paced lots of scoring going on it's a good one highlights from the first half uniqua hampton did not disappoint early she did not she came out shooting threes to me three for four from behind the arc i mean who would have thought and then montini has to answer with their three pointers and we see Nice drive to the mat basket by Marshall right there. They're going to take it inside. That's what they're known for doing. And then Montini hitting from outside. That's the first of two threes by Seaburger. And we're going to see Unika Hampton. She's setting up, again, three for four from behind the arc. She's shooting it really well from three-point land. And then again, Montini answering with another three. Yeah, these two teams combined for ten threes in the first half. Right, which is, I mean, it's very impressive. Most... Montini's been known for their threes, but the fact that Hillcrest has come out shooting and making them has been 
has been a big turnaround for right. them. And that's a big one from Seberger there to give her team the lead, capping off pretty remarkable first half of basketball. 33-31 Montini, state championship game, everything we hoped it would be from Redbird Arena. We'll be back after this network timeout. Your Subway sub of the game, Kiki Wilson, 5'5", senior for Montini. What a first half with just eight minutes of playing time. Five points, three rebounds, three assists, three steals. She is your Subway sub of the game. Subway, get any regular footlong for $5 at Subway. Eat fresh. Lee Hall, what's got for us here at halftime? Had a little chat, a chat with John Maniatis, and uh, he said we've got to close out on their three-point shooters. Too many threes made for Montini in the first half. We've got to do a better job of capitalizing once we get the ball inside. And then he said, I just told the girls we've got 16 minutes. We've got to decide whether we're going to be second place or state champions and put out the effort. Back to you. Sounds like something he'd say, and that point <laughs> blank probably as well. Seberger misses a three, gets her own rebound, hit the side of the backboard. Just joining us earlier today, Springfield took third over Oswego. Seaburger misses again, 65-41. Yet another chance for the Lady Broncos. Holloway to Seaburger. She's going to try yet She's another gonna one. She's going to shoot it till she makes it. And Hillcrest, it's like watching a hockey game and you can't get the puck out of your own end. Now they will. A batted down pass by Hampton off the leg of Sosnovich. That's something that Hill cries. I mean, they talked about. They need to get Montini one and done. Once they take their shot, if they don't make it, that's it. Hillcrest needs to get that rebound and go the other direction. They can't let them have two, three shots atten shot attempts. Montini starts off in man to man. Ali out to Hampton. Here's Marshall. She'll work her way down the lane. Gonna stick to it. It's paid off there, huh? Just kept going a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. So I got myself a shot. <laughs> she worked her way in there. We're tied at 33. Just underway in the third quarter. Neither one of these teams has ever won a state championship. We have a foul out top on Hampton. Halloway looking. She's going to, anytime she sees an opening, the smallest amount of a path, she's going to try and drive and get herself in the paint which again, opens things up for Montini. Not to worry, Hillcrest fans, just the first foul on Hampton. This is Adam, she made one in the first half and one here in the second half. And Montini's taken 23s, they've made seven of them. Hampton to Ali, three point lead for the Lady Broncos. Ali drives, goes up, foul. Foul on Whitney Adams. That was a nice block if you're just looking at the ball. If you're looking at the ball, it was a clean, nice block. But what she did get her with was her body. That's going to get you a foul every time. Big collision there. Yeah. Ali, it was funny. You didn't see it at the end of the, the, uh, the replay. Hampton went, or rather Adams went down to help her up, and Ali just popped up and didn't take her hand. That draws some boos and some oohs from each side <laughs> of the arena. First one, no good by the 5-2 sophomore. Missed them both. At this stage of the game in the state championship, that's just like a turnover. Have to avoid those. Half court trap by the Hawks now. In the corner, Seaburger. Another three. Seaburger. Oh, the weak spot of that. 1-3-1. One, one. They're the corners. You can get open shots. Somebody can step up. You're going to get them out of that 1-3-1 one, one in a hurry, but Hillcrest will stay in it. That's their bread and butter. Yeah, that's the quickest way to, to really defeat a zone defense is to hit those outside shots. And they're doing it, but Hillcrest is really good at the zone. Ali, an air ball. Pass. Holloway tracks it down. She'll go to the basket. Swatted out of there by Hetty. So with 5.35 to go, if you're just tuning in, Midway through the second quarter, Hillcrest led by 12. Oh, and a steal by Marshall. And that's out of bounds off of Montini. It will be Hillcrest basketball. And 13 to nothing run, 18 to four run in all to close out the first half. Turned a 27-15 Montini deficit into a 33-31 halftime lead. I feel we're gonna see another run right here from Hillcrest. Hampton. 
That thing rolled around halfway down and then spun back out. She hit her first three threes, has missed her last two. Holloway takes a bad shot. Unique with a rebound. Here come the Hawks doing what they do best. Let's push the ball. Hampton, a three, money. <laughs> She's on fire for by the three-point line. I never would have dreamed these two teams would be jacking up as many threes. That's 29 three-point shots combined between these two squads. I mean, Hampton only taking three-pointers. She's taking six. She's made four. De La Torre with a nice block. Seaburger for three. Oh, it's oh, raining threes here on a sunny day in Central Illinois. Seaburger has four threes. Hampton tries to answer. This is short. Adams the rebound. Six point Montini lead. And Courtney will walk it up. Or make that Whitney Holloway will walk it up. Whitney will take her time, catch her breath, allow her team to catch their breath. And more importantly, slow the tempo of the game down. Adams, nope. Here comes Ali, forcing the issue and she's fouled, foul will be called on Whitney Holloway, and we have a timeout on the floor with 4.12 left to play in the third quarter. It's championship Saturday. Montini leading by six. We'll return with more basketball from Redford Arena after these messages from your local And we're back at Redford Arena. Hillcrest looking for a little bit of a rally here. We've got little, little Blue Riding Hood here. We've got the King, we've got the Cowboy. I'm not sure who this is. And we've got the Rally Pony. This is the Rally Pony. And Hillcrest needs the Rally Pony to come through for them right now. They're down six. I did have an usher tell me yesterday that the Hillcrest fans were the best fans all day. They didn't say one bad thing to a ref all day yesterday. So these guys are getting it done with class, Scott. Sportsmanship is what it's all about. And attitude from the Illinois High School Association. Good job, Hillcrest fans. Their team is down by six. Hampton, short arm that one, but Ali at 5-2 gets the rebound. Kiki Wilson took it away, though. Now Wilson head up on the dribble. Shovels the pass to Holloway. Nothing there, so she'll come back out top. Courtney Holloway headed to, or rather Whitney Holloway, headed to Notre Dame. Wilson to Adams. This is the sophomore Brown. She is strong. She is tough to stop inside. She is strong. Like, is he, oh, just so much strength. She goes up with the ball, a lot of power, and she's very stable. Marshall missing the three. A steal by Hetty, but couldn't control, lost it out of bounds. Tiana Brown is a six foot sophomore. She knocked Uniqua Hampton, the 5'11 McDonald's All American, to the ground. And Hampton, she didn't take a dive either. I mean, that was contact. No, she was not. It didn't look like it took much from Tiana Brown. The Hawks call up that full court pressure, just kind of going almost quarter court, half court now. Holloway, nice dish to Adams, layup good. Hillcrest is in trouble. 22 point swing in this game. Hillcrest had a 12 point lead. Now they're down by 10. This is Autris Coleman, and she scores just into the ball game. Coach Maniatis looking for points on his bench now, and he gets it from the 5'10 senior. Hillcrest defensive intensity, not what it was. They can't go half court trap because of the open threes. Look at Seaburger. She's set up, you can't see her on the lower waiting. corner of your screen. <laughs> She's just buried in that corner, waiting for a pass. And Adams at the top of your screen. Yeah, Mantini knows that their biggest advantage is the three-point line, so they're waiting, especially if Hillcrest is going to sit in a zone. They're not always going to get those drives to the basket. Wait a minute, we're going to have a reversal of call here. One official said, Mantini ball. I don't think that ball was ever touched. So the officials are talking it over. That should be Hillcrest ball. And it is. Good job by the official on this side. Hillcrest fans were asking for that change, they got it. And see, when you don't yell at the refs, I was like going to say that sportsmanship that. right there. They waited patiently for that call. There was no booing, no ooing. But then they didn't take advantage of the break because Wilson, or rather, Ali took a bad shot. Wilson, 
Holloway took her time, gathered herself and scored. Nice hesitation, Holloway. waiting for the defenders to slide right past her. A little head fake, you wait, gather yourself. She goes up with the two. Hampton, out top to Ali. Marshall drives right side, cut off there by Thomas. Tries again, cut off yet again. And Courtney will finally be called for the foul, and she can't believe it. She thought she was the one foul. I guess the foul lead, not the foul her. <laughs> we'll see it again right here. Arms get hooked and tangled. It's tough to tell. Good job. I think that was a good call. Hampton lobs it down low to Coleman. Jump ball, and it will stay with Hillcrest. Coleman's come in the game here the last couple of minutes and played well with a basket, and they're showing good hands. Marshall off the inbounds, a little jumper, air ball. Hetty was out of bounds, she tried to save it, so the ball, ball will bomb to Montini with 1.38 to go, and frustration starting to set in on Coach Maniotis' face. They were in control early, not anymore. Now 10 points down, but I think Hillcrest again, like Montini, they're gonna make a run back. This is gonna be a game of runs, who can withstand it? Both teams shooting 41%. Difference is nine three-pointers for Montini. Wilson, Sostovich for number 10. That's short. Oh, and the rebound was right there for Ali. She couldn't hang on. Coleman couldn't get her hands on it. By the time they did, a couple of Lady Broncos were, were in there. Jump ball, and Montini will keep it. You can see a little bit of frustration on Hillcrest's face, like the Hillcrest players' faces. They need to not let Montini get in their heads. It's gonna lead to fouls, it's gonna lead to bad decisions. They're gonna have to keep this going and realize that, you know, one or two quick plays, and this is their game. Well, Hillcrest got a break again. It was Montini crashing glass. That ball hit off the foot of Courtney Thomas. The only reason Hillcrest is getting the basketball here. Gotta do a better job on the defensive glass. I know the threes bounce out long, but you still gotta get after them. Here's Hampton, backing in, turnaround jumper, good. Uniqua Hampton with a bucket, she's got 14. Here's the pressure, the steal. Oh, what a pass. Nice pass. Kobe would have been proud of that one. And here's the run that you were talking about, Sarah. Oh, big collision right in front of us, and that's a block. Uniqua Hampton goes crashing into the scores table. Oh, she mm. is cut over her right eye and bleeding. Right in front of us. That was a nasty spill, and she hit her head on something sharp. Oh, yeah, there's blood right here in front of us on the floor. Look at this collision. That's a tough one. They're going hard after. There's just not enough room. Head and to she head. cracks her head on the table as well as she was coming down. They knocked heads pretty bad right there. Well, and I saw the cut literally a couple of feet away from us. And she's going to need some stitches. I don't think they can close that up here. No, that looks side. split wide open. What an effort. What hustle. On the subject of fun facts, after that, yourseason.com. Fun fact, Montini this year. 5A football championship, a 2A wrestling title, their third consecutive. Look what Hillcrest did last year, a boys track and field state championship. So these two teams and these two schools, they got it going on. Yourseason.com, fun fact. Well, nothing fun about that collision. There's a break in the action because trying to clean up the floor. There's blood on the floor and a trail of it all the way across the court. So we will have a bit of a stoppage in play here. Coach Maniatis is concerned, number one, about this game, but Uniqua Hampton is going to be okay. I mean, she got up and walked off, but there's a serious gash. When, when she got up literally right in front of us, Sarah, it was like looking at a boxer. It was. I mean, it was split wide open. That's how hard they clunked heads. It just looked like it kind of split from the middle and, and ran outwards. It was a nasty hit. Well, and what a steal she had. She, she hit that little turnaround jumper from 14 feet, stole, and that beautiful behind the back pass. It was a beautiful pass. Lee Hall's got an update, Lee. All right, Scott, well, I heard you talking about the wig, and I thought, you know, I'll take one for the team and, and give it a test run. And how do you, 
How, how do you think it looks on me, bud? Oh, awesome. You're a Bronco now. You know, I, I've always wanted to be a blonde, and, you know, I, I think it really brings my eyes out. And, by the way, Scott, we've got one for you, too, oh, buddy, right please. here, all right? Thanks. This is all for you, brother. Thanks a lot, Lee. Can't wait to get my hands on one of those. You're Thank so you. lucky. <laughs> He is bringing it over, by the way. Maybe if Montini wins during post-game stats, I'll put it on, okay? <laughs> okay. Earlier today, Springfield won the 3A consolation game, an impressive win for the Senators. Highest finish in Springfield history between Lanfear and Calvary and Sacred Heart and Southeast. 65-41, highest ever finish for Oswego. All right, so the floor is cleaned up. Uniqua Hampton is leaving the arena. She's with a medic. I know they have very fine medical facilities here at ISU. My guess is somewhere underneath the arena here, they have a place for her to get some stitches. That's my guess. It's a Division I school. I'm sure they do. Yeah, they got enough of that stuff back in the training room. I'm sure they can get her patched up. It's just how quickly they can get her patched up and they can get that stuff to stop bleeding. Hillcrest back in the game. And Martini wants to hold for the final shot. 17 seconds to play. What a comeback by Hillcrest. Holloway in the corner. Sosnovich, a three, it's short. Saved into Hillcrest. They throw it away, though. Sosnovich going to get a shot at the buzzer. No good. Rebound to Marshall. And that's it. Eight minutes to decide who wins their first state championship. We'll be back after this network timeout. Take a look at your Menards stats through three quarters of the 3A state championship game. Save big money at Menards. And you see three point field goals. Montini has shot nine for 27, but Hillcrest unexpectedly five for 10, 50% from behind the arc, mostly attributed to Nikwa Hampton. And these teams are shooting very well this afternoon. Rebounds, look at Montini up by 13. But you're right, the nine three-point field goals. And Cowboy Troy <laughs> needs a comeback. He needs Unika Hampton back in the game. We're trying to find out if she is definitely out for the rest of the game or if she is getting stitched up. As soon as we get that information, we will pass it along to you. And that is the storyline here with eight minutes to go to crown a state champion. See if Hampton can get up off the deck and come back in the game if doctors will allow her to do so. Same time, you do have to remember this is just a basketball game. I know it's a big one. There's Marshall. Not a good shot there. Wilson, the rebound. What you worry about is a possible mild concussion, too. Right. Somebody gets hit that hard in the head, you want to make sure that they're all right. Well, if you folks are watching and you hear the crowd erupt, that's because Hampton, I mean, if she comes out of the locker room, there's a traveling violation. We'll have to walk right out in front of the Hillcrest crowd, and they will let you hear it. Well, we have another Willis Reed, New York Knicks situation. He comes out of the locker room to play. We'll see. <laughs> Six-point game. Hillcrest can inch closer. Just underway in the fourth quarter. De La Torre down low. Fouled. She'll shoot two. Courtney Thomas with the foul. And she's shaking her head. She thought she got all ball. It was a nice post up. She got a good seal. There was a little contact on that hand there. The hop step there, too, that Montini fans thought was a traveling. Ava Torres' free throw is no good. One for five from the free throw line so far today for Hillcrest. Uh, they've missed their last four. And Hetty's going to get called for the foul. Those were big misses, sir. Those were huge. You look at free throws, they're free throws for a reason. <laughs> but you, most teams need to hit those. They need to take advantage of those opportunities. When you have a team that's struggling from the line, it's going to be a huge disadvantage. Well, Hillcrest got to set up the press because of the ball, or because of the foul, rather. Didn't force the turnover. Now, Montini's going to spread the floor. They want Hillcrest to have to go back to that 1-3-1. Right now, it's just basically an extended 2-3. Holloway drives, leaves in the corner for Sosnovich. And she stepped on the sideline. Well, let's find out more about Uniqua Hampton. Here's our Lee Hall. 
Really not much to tell you. I mean, the ambulance is here, and they're going to take her to the local hospital to get stitched up. It's uh, obviously bad enough that she needs to get, uh, get it looked at and get it taken care of. Unfortunately, it happens here with the game on the line. But uh, her best interest, she's going to go to the hospital and get it stitched up, guys. Great work, Lee. Thank you very much. There's the McDonald's All-American out of the rest of the state championship game. See if her teammates can step up. New player in the ball game is Sherilyn Wiggins, a 5'8 senior. And we have ourselves a turnover here. The head coach Manny Otis will have to go a bit deeper into his bench now than he planned to. Yeah, with Uniqua out, I mean, that's a huge disadvantage for Hillcrest. But they can step up. I mean, she's been the only one shooting from behind the arc, so she's provided a lot of points for him. But it's still not out of the realm of possibility that these Hillcrest players can step up and finish this game. They're really picking up the pressure defensively. Now they go back to that 1-3-1. Michaela's a great kid, probably one of the best. Pass tipped out of bounds, it'll stay. Montini basketball. And Hillcrest is gonna have to bring the pressure here because it's not, you know, it's not beyond Montini to kind of hold the ball and work it around and waste the clock. They're very good at that. So Hillcrest, if they want it, want to get this ball back, they're going to have to put a lot of pressure on Martini because they will look to hold it. Martini knows what it's like to play shorthanded. Michaela Johnson, who's headed to UConn, isn't playing. She's out with a torn ACL. So they know all about not having their best player on the floor. There's a steal, and then the ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Hillcrest. So Coach Nichols is probably saying, we don't have our best player. No, you don't have <laughs> yours. No, he's not. It's not like Jason to do something like that. No, he wouldn't, especially in an instance like that. Ali, a floater is good. She plays with such emotion. I love Ali's emotion. She gets so hyped up and so pumped up. Hillcrest starting to feel it. Down by four is all. Holloway. To Seaburger for three. A huge three oh, for Allison. She's just been waiting in that corner all game. She's got five three-pointers. She's just been hanging out. She waits in that corner, waits for that ball to come to her. Wiggins at the top out. of the backboard, and a foul is called after the shot on Seaburger. A uh, break after a... a Badly missed shot by Wiggins. Jasmine Sanders, a sophomore, will come in. And they'll send Wiggins to the bench. 5.20 to go for a state championship. Seaburger's three has given Montini a little bit of wiggle room here. Eddie, turnaround jumper. Got it to drop in. That was a nice roll, roll on that shot. Holloway and Wilson, two point guards in now to break the press. Adams almost threw that away. Holloway, nice save. And here we're going to see Montini's going to work it around. They want to use the clock. They want to take time off that clock. I think had this been that play in that second quarter, you know, Thomas would have taken it, Adams would have taken it, they would have gone to the hole, but not now. That's the 11th three of the game for Montini. Adams has four of them. Seaburger has five of them. What a shooting performance. Eight-point deficit now. A long three is off the mark. Offensive rebound. Put back up and in there. That was Little Ali at 5-2 getting busy inside. And Hillcrest staying right there. Down by six. Approach the midway mark of the final quarter of the 3A state championship. Boy, Adams wanted to pull the trigger again, didn't she? She did. She looked like it, but she, I'm sure Nichols was in her ear yelling at her to pull that ball back out and waste some time. Here's Holloway standing there with a the dribble. Eddie inches over. They're going to have to go man. They're going to have to start going trap something. We can't allow this game to... Get too much shorter. Seaburger again. Oh, no. They keep leaving her open and she keeps making them pay. Six three pointers, 18 points. She's been hanging out in that corner all day. Nice take back down the other way. Layup is missed by Marshall. Rebound to Montini. And the Lady Broncos in good shape with 320 to play, up by nine. Now Hillcrest goes. Straight up man to man. This is where Holloway can hurt you. 
There's a foul out top by Ali. Breaking the action, 312 left to go. Seaburger has six threes. We will return with more championship basketball from Redbird Arena after these messages from your local station. Montini trying to complete a hat trick, a football title, a wrestling title, and the girls getting in on the action possibly with a basketball championship. 12 of 30 from three point land. Adams with four. Seaburger with six. And looking over the record book, we believe both Adams and Seaburger broke the record of three, which Shyla Knott of Peoria Richwoods had since they've gone to four classes. She had three last year. Record for double A is seven. That was from Kristen Santa of Loyola back in 1997. She made seven for Seaburger, seven. Well, she was hoping anyway, but the ball went over the top of the backboard. Oh, and she makes them, she makes them, but she misses them. She misses them. There's no gray area. No, but you got to figure she's shooting six for 12, 50%. You'll take it. A little harder to rebound, but you'll take it. Hillcrest playing without Uniqua Hampton, who hit heads with Holloway in the third quarter. Opened up a gash over her right eye. She's at a local hospital. There's Hetty. She'll head to the line. Shanice Hetty is one strong girl, just a sophomore. She is. She goes hard to the basket, and she does a good job of creating a little bit of space. You saw her throw a little elbow in there, but she creates some space for herself, and she goes up strong. She draws contact. She's a nice, solid player for the Hawks. We have her down on our future D1 list. Came up with a list before the tournament of all the D1ers or even college players, D2s or D3s. A bunch of, I think we counted somewhere in the vicinity of close to 20. And we're gonna have a over the line violation on Eddie, so she won't get the second one. See what's Coach Maniatis, the old baseball player from Illinois Benedictine College in Lyle has up his sleeve for the last 245. There's a bump in the backcourt on Ali. That is only the fifth team foul. I know some of the fans are huffing and puffing a little bit, but they need to start fouling here to get Montini to the free throw line. They do. They need to get that ball back as soon as possible. I know the fans there wanted to push off from Holloway, but when you're moving that fast, it's, it's a little difficult to make those calls unless it's very, very blatant because the girls are moving their feet so fast. 2.40 left to go, eight point lead. Holloway and it's stripped away from Ali, out of bounds. It'll stay with Montini. Tell you what, Whitney Holloway can't wait for this game to be over so she doesn't have to look out at Ali anymore. Yeah, I feel like she would follow, Ali would follow her to the locker room. <laughs> She's been all over her all night, all afternoon. There's Wilson, she's being hounded by Wiggins. Two very good teams. Wilson. Weaving through defenders. There's Holloway in the corner to Seaburger. She keeps shooting. Another air ball. Adams, though, there to bail her out on the weak side. I don't know if Coach Nichols liked that shot, but I guess we call those heat checks, right? Yeah. Holloway knew she, her, um, Adams knew she was going to shoot it, so she got in position, which was good. It was almost like a pass. Nice save there by Marshall, throwing it off the body of Wilson and Seaburger is going to have a seat and look at coach Nichols saying to her he goes why are you shooting well, you missed the why are you shooting that yeah, shot the, the arms straight out in the air we could read his lips from here uh, Eddie banked that in timeout Hillcrest 153 to play eight point game still a shot for the Hawks don't go anywhere back with more from Redbird Arena after this network timeout This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the exclusive entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of this program without the express written consent of the Illinois High School Association and cost broadcast sales is strictly prohibited. Coach Maniata is trying to come up with some magic here. Uh, relating it to what he's used to, baseball. They're down by 
What, four runs in the bottom of the ninth <laughs> inning. And there's two outs. But they have pressure. That's and what they're steal. gonna bring, their pressure. A steal by Marshall and a foul on Montini. That, I believe, is the seventh team foul. So a one in bonus now. This will be Kristen Marshall. These are crucial free, sh free throws for Hillcrest. They're going to need to make these. And the second that shot goes through the hoop, they're going to be right back in their press looking to get another quick steal. He's only a 48% free throw shooter. That one is good. And a hug from her teammate. Wiggins goes <laughs> over and hugs her, saying, thank you for doing that. Thank you for making it. It's down to seven. Now to six. Here comes the pressure, Sarah. Holloway. Cut off on the sideline. Good pass to Wilson. Ooh, Ali will get called for a reach. They're gonna bring a lot of pressure and they're gonna, I mean, they're looking. I think there was contact down low. That there was, Wilson there was a little push. Over. I was trying to see where that push came from. There was some contact there, but Hillcrest is still going to have to foul him in order to try and get this ball back. Next foul results in the bonus. Holloway against Ali, who watches her like a hawk. There's a reach out top on Wiggins. So Holloway will go to the line to shoot one in the bonus. Tough part here for Ali is she's got four fouls. She's guarding Holloway. She's going to have to really, really be smart because she's a key opponent to the defensive end for Hillcrest. Holloway shoots 62% from the line. Front end is good. She's headed to Notre Dame. Not next year. She's only a junior. We see a lot of boys declaring early. Rarely do we see girls declaring during their junior seasons, but she has. Seems like co college coaches are starting to look at them earlier and earlier, starting to get commitments from them earlier and earlier. 90 seconds to go in the state championship game. Eight points. That's the deficit. Eddie from 15. Too hard. Rebound comes out to Adams. They quickly get it into the hands of Whitney Holloway. Holloway, burning precious seconds off the clock. A foul on Wiggins. Holloway back to the line for one in the bonus. And she's so fast. Holloway can really try and get past the defender in order to prevent teams from following her. Because as Hillcrest, they want to follow her as soon as possible so they can keep as much time on that clock. And obviously, Montini wants to burn as much clock as possible. But Holloway's very sneaky in kind of eluding the defenses and not letting them foul right away. Front end for Whitney Holloway. No good. Eddie the rebound. Still doable here with a minute left. Eight point difference, a three in the air. Foster, no good. Battle for the rebound. Wilson comes out of there with it. Gets it ahead to Sosnovich. She will wisely bring it back out top. There's a foul. And Montini with 48 seconds left. Another one in bonus opportunity here, up by eight. And Hillcrest fans will be wondering on their way back, back up to Country Club Hills what would have happened had Unico Hampton not been knocked out of the game. Yeah, especially she was the biggest factor in that little run they had. I mean, she was involved in the steal. She was involved in, in every play that had built on that run. And then with her taken out of that game, it really stunted them. Kiki coolly and calmly knocked them both down. It's a 10-point advantage now for Montini. Got to get a shot off here and quick. Oster drives in, missed it. Jump ball, and it will belong to Montini. Well, this will give us a quick chance to preview tonight's heavyweight championship matchup between Whitney Young and Bolingbrook. Yeah, you thought this was a good game. It's gonna be even faster tonight. Both teams, Bolingbrook, Whitney Young, like to run, like to press. We're gonna see a very, very good matchup. Lots of talent on that court tonight. Um, I think we're gonna have some really, this was a great game. We're gonna see another great championship game being played tonight. Wilson sits with seven points. 
Five assists and five rebounds. That's a performance off the bench for Kiki. Holloway to Sosnovich. And she's fouled by Kristen Marshall. Well, Montini has had an incredible school year. There are many schools in the state of Illinois who've never won a state championship in anything. They will have three in one school year. 5A football, 2A wrestling, 3A basketball. Doesn't get much better than that. What are other baseball team is? Free throw, good. <laughs> yeah, that's the first point for Sosnovich. She was 0 for 8 from the field. All three pointers before that shot. I mean, they really hit it from behind the arc. And we see Coach Nichols made some subs, getting the seniors on the court before this game ends. Shot 39% from three-point land. Montini did. 12 of 31. Twelve seconds left. A three. Air ball by Wiggins. Out of bounds to Montini. Allison Rogales checked into the game. A senior for Montini. And there are smiles. Even Michaela Johnson. She's got bigger and better things ahead. She's going to UConn. But right now she can celebrate Montini's first ever girls state basketball championship. It was a great effort by Montini this whole game. They got down early, but they came back fighting. Well, those fans are used to celebrating. Two years ago, a third place finish. This year, the big trophy. And did they earn it? 12 of 31 from three-point land. What a performance. What a testament to these girls. You would think, I'm sure there were many critics out there. The second Michaela Johnson went down, they said, Montini's over with. They're done, that's it. But this team came together, they fought back in an impressive, impressive season for that entire squad. But Hillcrest, they've never been down here before. There's Nichols and Maniatis shaking hands. They'll take back a second place trophy, the first ever for the girls. They broke through after all those McDonald's All-Americans, after all those wins, they get downstate. Lee Hall has some happy folks on the sideline. All right, we're with Jason Nichols. Well, what an effort by your girls to overcome that early first half deficit and to uh, really play tough here in the second half. Oh, it was awesome. We hit some monster threes. I mean, we live and die by it. Fortunately, we're alive. So, yeah, you know what? We persevered and we did. I know it's a cliche, but these kids, a lot of people doubted them when Michaela went out. That's how good they are. It yeah. was awesome. Your girls got a taste of it a couple of years yeah, ago, and now this senior class gets the state championship. It's awesome. I think that was a big help. I really do. So I'm proud of them. All right, congratulations, Thanks. Coach. All right, thank you. All right, here she is, our country financial player of the game, Allison Seberger. Six three-pointers. That's a 3A state championship game record the old double-a record is seven congratulations to you obviously you were except for the one that hit the side of the backboard you were feeling it yeah it feels awesome we've done we've worked so hard for this and to win it for Michaela, that's what we've talked about all season since she's gone down. It feels amazing to win. Tell me about, yeah, tell me about that. Michaela, you know, All-American goes down. You guys think, wow, you guys have handled it, though, all year. Yeah, I mean, everyone's doubted us. We've put it on our back and said we can do this. We're great without her and with her. So we proved it today that we're the number one team in the state of Illinois in 3A. You guys got a taste of it a couple of years ago, finished third. How much did that help you this weekend? I think it gave us so much more exper experience. We've we've had the composure the whole weekend, and this just feels amazing. We've done it. Our football team, wrestling team, and now girls basketball. Go have fun. Thanks. Allison Seberger, our country financial player of the game. Over to Jeff Fritzen. And now at this time, please meet the Lady Hawks of Hillcrest High School, who finish the season in second place with a final record of 28 wins and four losses. First meet the superintendent of Hillcrest High School, William Kendall.
Principal Renee Sims. <laughs> Athletic Director Lisa Woonar. <laughs> Trainer Jason Hall. Head coach, John Maniatis. <laughs> Assistant coach, Rachel Benol. <laughs> Assistant coach, Joe Kintz. <laughs> Assistant coach, Dave Klepchak. Assistant coach, Bob Reeser. <laughs> Assistant coach, Rick Tustin. <laughs> Manager, Latricia Maxwell. <laughs> Latricia Maxwell. Manager, Chanel Hobson. Hawks squad members, number 14, Samira Ali. Number 20, Sherilyn Wiggins. Number 21, Jasmine Sanders. Number 22, Althea Burke. Twenty five, Jack Quine Foster. Number thirty, Dana Geddes. Thirty one, Shanice Hetty. Thirty two, Kristen Marshall. 33, Mia Jones. Number 34, Uniqua Hampton. Number 40, Brittany Wilson. Forty-two, Yolanda De La Torre. 44, Autris Coleman. And number 50, Jemiah Phillips. At this time, please meet the Lady Broncos of Montini High School who finished the season in first place with a final record of 33 wins and two losses. First meet the president of Montini High School, James Segredo. <laughs> Principal Marianne O'Neill. <laughs> Athletic Director Don Riley. <laughs> Trainer Megan Lindley. Head coach, Jason Nichols. <laughs> Assistant coach, Al Galanka. <laughs> Assistant coach, Mark Sullivan. <laughs> Assistant coach, Chris Smith. Assistant coach, Caprice Smith. And assistant coach, Jim Cahill.
And the Lady Broncos, number two, Haley Adams. Number three, Courtney Thomas. Number five, Nakia Edom. Number 10, Christina Perino. Number 11, Whitney Holloway. Thirteen, Mallory Sosnovich. Fifteen, Dana Rutkowski. Number twenty, Allison Seberger. Twenty-three, Kiki Wilson. Number 25, Michaela Johnson. Number 30, Malena Johnson. Thirty-two, Whitney Adams. Forty-four, Diamond Thompson. 54, Tiana Brown. And number 55, Allison Regala. And now, will Coach Manny Addis and the captains of Hillcrest High School please step forward to receive the Class 3A second place trophy presented by Dan Klepp. And now, Coach Nichols, the Montini High School captains, please step forward and receive the first place trophy presented by Dr. Nichols. state champions, the Lady Broncos from Lombard, Montini, 3A state champions here in 2010, the school's third state championship, football, wrestling, and now girls basketball, and they deserve it. They played well, and they're the best team down here. They did. They played exceptionally hard, and what an athletic program Montini has. I mean, three state championships. We were talking about you'd be lucky to get one as a as an athletic director right. and as a school, but to have three, that's an that's a impressive Impressive little stat. <laughs> All right, let's begin the stats. How about the Menard stats to wrap things up? Save big money at Menard's. Three-point shooting, the key today, no doubt about it, for Montini. It was. I mean, Montini, 14, or I should say 12 made three-pointers. Six from Seaburger, four from Adams. I mean, they were knocking them down from behind the arc. And then we didn't talk about it all really during the game, but Montini out-rebounded Hillcrest. And as Coach Nichols said in his pregame, that was going to be a big factor for them is controlling the boards. And they did it in those final stats that we'll take a look at. Yeah, a lot of long rebounds. They yes. got after them. They really did. They really did. They chased down their shots, and they, they knew that that was going to be a component. They followed their shot, and they hit down threes. And points in the paint, Hillcrest did well, outscoring them by 14. But still, it comes down to knocking down you know, almost 40% of your three-point shots, and you're not going to beat a team that good when they're making their shots from behind the arc. Yeah, and Coach Nichols said when they're hot, they're hot, and you better look out, and they were hot tonight. What a weekend for 3A. Don't go anywhere, though. 4A is coming up tonight. Some big games for you, of course, that championship. Young and Bolingbrook, that's going to be one for the ages. A great third-place game as well right here on the uh, IHSA television network. And I've been critical of these things all weekend. <laughs> i got to put it on now. Congratulations to the Broncos and Hillcrest. What a great championship game. Thanks for watching. We'll send it out with a local timeout. Montini, state champions in 3A in 2010.